everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sports Rambling. I am your host, Brian Belsito, welcoming you once again to my studio here in Dewey, Arizona. So today is Wednesday, September 23rd. So baseball is just coming down the wire here in this shortened season. Tonight we've got game four of the Boston Celtics Miami Heat Eastern Conference Finals um, with the Celtics trying to even things up at 2-2. We've also got game three of the Stanley Cup Finals between the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that's a little bit of a roundup on what's going on in sports. Also wanted to touch real quick on the fact that the Denver Nuggets got back into the series last night against the Lakers. So that is sitting at two games to one with an important game four coming up tomorrow. So that is enough of that for the sports update of what's going on this week. I am super excited for this show. So this is another fan correspondent, fan focus episode where I'm bringing in a friend of mine to talk about their uh, sports teams and the city that they hail from and what's going on in their sports world. Today, as many of you know, today I have roots from the Philadelphia area. And although I live in Arizona, I still got love for the teams out there in Philadelphia. So I'm going to take you back real quick on a little bit of a, a, a trip in time for myself. Back in the early 2000s, I had the opportunity to live in South New Jersey, just over the bridge from Philadelphia. So at that time, I was uh, spending a lot of time playing in the APA pool leagues and just, uh, you know, watching sports, loving the, you know, being a SoCal guy and, and, and loving being back where my family, my, my parents were born and raised. Both my sisters were born in Philly. Most of my family were born in Philly. So being back there and getting a feel for the East Coast. So when I was in the bars shooting pool in the APA League, I came across, you know, everybody always has their favorite bartender, you know, the guy that's slinging the suds for them while they're shooting some pool or while they're watching a game. And that, my friend, was my buddy, Mike Murphy. So I've got Mike on board here on Sports Rambling. We call him Murph. Everybody knows and loves Murph, you know, all up and down the East Coast. I know he's been down to Miami working. I know he is now currently in the Chicago area. So I am super excited for this episode. And without further ado, I am going to bring my buddy Mike Murphy on and we are going to talk some Philly sports. Murph. What's up, buddy? How are you? What's going on, man? I think I need you to flip your camera or you're, uh, you're looking sideways for me. There we go. There we go. Now we're on the right side of the world. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. Just hanging out, watching the fills. I like that Harper Real Mudo shirt there, man. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we can get a couple more. Bryce just went yard, so uh, oh, did 3-1 he? now. Right on. So what's the score yeah. now? I know we won a little bit ago. 3-1 fills going to the, going the sixth. So, bullpen's coming soon, so we'll start sweating a little bit. <laughs> it's been a pretty rough go for that bully this year, man. <laughs> pretty bad. Years, seven, right? yeah, so, plus 7 ERA is not going to win you many games. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, hey, before we get started on uh, rambling about Philly sports, tell me a little bit yeah, yeah. of what you've been up to and what you're doing now over in the Chicago area, right? Yeah, about an hour north of Chicago here in a town called Antioch, Illinois, uh, Lake County, Illinois. I'm about five miles from Wisconsin border. Okay. Um, general manager of a bar called Blarney Island. Um, when I say it's an island, it's a man-built island, but we are in the middle of a lake. Uh, to get to the bar, you have to take uh, one of our shuttles that we provide or your own boat to get to the bar. All right. um, it's a mile off, mile off of shore. Uh, our little tagline there is a mile away from reality. <laughs> Uh, we we kind of, you know, we aim to make you feel like you're on vacation for a day when you're out there. That's that's our goal. So That's good stuff, man. That sounds like an awesome place. I hope to uh, make it out there. You know, Chicago yeah, is please. the one major city that I've never been to. So I would actually love to get out there. So Got to travel a little – or got to go to the city a little bit last year. Not so much this year with everything going on. But I yeah. uh, got to go to Wrigley a couple times. I uh, saw the Fields and Cubs, which was awesome. Nice. Um, haven't, been, haven't been to a White Sox game yet, but hopefully we can grab that next year, though. 
cool. cool. Um, that sounds really cool. Um, so let's get on to what we are uh, getting together to talk about here, and that's good old Philly sure. sport, man. So tell me yeah. a little bit about. I know you you grew up in the in the South Jersey area, right? So you born and raised yeah. Philly fan. Yes, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a four for four guy. Uh, well, my whole life, all four Philly sports. Yep. Uh, you know, I guess first thing I really visibly remember. Um, I was two years old when they won the 80 World Series, but I mean, like as far as uh, exciting moments for for Philadelphia sports was uh, the '93 Phils, um, okay. which was quite a run. But yeah. uh, I mean, I I remember Schmidt and those guys um, playing, but they, those teams never won much of anything. Uh, Schmidt was a, a monster, but uh, right. those Philadelphia yeah. teams back then, the Eagles really weren't doing too much. Uh, Flyers were okay. In 89, I believe they made the Stanley Cup final and got uh, waxed by, by Gretzky and the Black Hall, or Gretzky and the Oilers, I believe. Yep. Um, but first vivid memory was, uh, you know, those 93 fills. So it's kind of one of those things from then. I kind of, I was all in. You got a, you got a first uh, memory for the Eagles as well? What would you call that? Oh, uh, Cunningham's 90, what was it, 95 yard, 95 yard touchdown to Fred Barnett. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I think remember it was. that. Yeah. I, I clearly remember the Monday nighter too when he got almost got his knee taken out by Carl Banks yep. and recovered to make yep. that touchdown pass. That was a pretty awesome play as well. Yep. I mean, let me just give you the background. I don't know if you if you remember. It's been a few years since we've seen each other, but my teams are mostly West Coast, but I got yeah, up yeah. for Philly because my parents were both born in Philadelphia, both born and raised in Philadelphia. Most of my family. So while they're not my favorite teams, except for the Flyers, I do root for the Flyers. Um, while they're not my first team, anytime my teams, the Giants, the Broncos, or the Jazz are out, I'm all about Philly. And you could even go with when the Syracuse Orange are out and March Madness, I'm straight over to Villanova. So feel you on the Philly love, man. So um, yeah. let's see. If I had to ask you, who are your three favorite Philly athletes in your time as a fan? Uh, Utley. Utley's going to be up in the top three. Uh, Brian Dawkins. Uh, that guy That guy was a absolute monster. And yeah. The hardest soul of that team. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, you went to the Broncos afterwards. Yeah. Play with you guys. Um, and then I guess if I'm going third, um, I mean, my first – I played baseball my whole life. Uh, still play softball. I don't know if you want to call it competitively, but, <laughs> you know, go out and play. Um, <laughs> yeah. I guess probably probably Schmitty. Okay, right on. Uh, right Lindros on. is Lindros is close. Yeah, my guy for the for those old '90s and early 2000s Flyers teams was John Leclair. I was always a big. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I actually worked with his his daughter worked for me at a uh, Marion Golf Club. Oh, right girls. on, right yeah. on. I I was actually in the house for. Uh, Jeremy Roenick's first game as a flyer as well. So nice. Kind of cool. Yeah, JR was a good flyer. Yeah, man. I guess I can't can't not mention Iverson as well with those Sixers teams. He was the only reason that team did anything that year, really. Yep. Yep. My only Sixers games, the only Sixer game I ever made it to was uh it just happened to be Chris Weber's first game as a, oh, as nice. a Sixer. So um, I remember I was I was out and about one night in Philly when they traded for Weber and uh I had a, a couple of adult beverages and believed that that was going to be the turning point for the Sixers. They were winning a championship. Yeah, I, hear you. <laughs> I remember being super stoked too for that team. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I did like that I always tell people, it was a good memory for me was um, being in, in Philly or actually I was in Jersey that night shooting pool and sitting at the bar at, I think I was at Dominic's, I believe. And for a SoCal guy, this was the first time I had ever experienced an entire bar without the Eagles being on, breaking into Fly Eagles fly, fly. I was like, wait a minute, what's <laughs> going on? They're not even on. Yeah. And the whole bar was going yeah. wild with it. So it's just a different experience. You don't get that in SoCal. So. Yeah, the uh, Philadelphia fans are uh, are intense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm intense. I'm not the, the guy that's going to go out and start and fight songs in the middle of the the bar where nothing's going on, but, uh, you know, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always try to go to bat for my Philly fans. Cause I, uh, you know, 
I talked to a lot of people online and all over the country and, and being from SoCal and then now living in Arizona and having lived back there. And I always get this whole Philly fans are the worst. And I'm like, you haven't messed, you haven't met enough of them to make that determination. There are a lot of yeah, good fans just, out there. Every fan base has ones. knuckleheads. So. Right. Every fan base has the bad ones, but I feel like the, the, the majority of Philly fans are, you know, they're, they're passionate just like any other team. I mean, yep. you want to see your team win. Yep. You have a rooting interest and, you know, yep. you're not going to win all the time, but you're going to want to, you want to win. Yeah. <laughs> you and, know? and we all know you get a couple of adult beverages in the wrong people, stuff's going to happen, but Absolutely. Um, we just That's hope it doesn't right. happen a lot. So <laughs> My life. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. That's what I do. <laughs> I hear you. Um, I loved the one you were talking about the other night when you were like, I love it when a guy says to me, I'm never coming back. And then they're back the next night. Or the other one I believe you said was they all end up being a semi-pro boxer or a fighter or something like that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it was a isolated incident a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, he uh, you know told me he was a professional fighter. I asked him he had to leave, and then uh, so I'm never coming back. I'm telling all my friends I'm never coming back, and he was back uh, 14 hours later. <laughs> too funny, so. too funny. So let's uh, <laughs> let's move over to the Eagles. I know it's been a rough start for them. So what what's your take so far Perhaps. from what you've seen out of them? Um, well. Wentz isn't getting the job. I'm a Wentz guy. I'll yeah. start that off. I'm, he's our, he's my quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, people in Philly are, are jumping off the Walt Whitman. Uh, you know, that he's he's the issue. He's the problem. Um, I think a lot of things are different from the year they won the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not even talking about Nick Foles. I'm talking about, um, you know, Frank Reich moving on to Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he ran that offense beautifully. Um, losing the special teams uh, coordinator a couple of years ago. There's a couple of pieces here and there that are left, and they haven't found those spots, haven't filled those spots in. Um, I'm not ready to jump off the bridge yet. Uh, I like a couple of young pieces on the outside. I like Jalen Rager, um, Dallas Goddard in his third year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, is a solid second tight end. I don't know if they're going to pay Wentz, uh, Ertz. But uh, if they don't, at least you have you have Goddard coming back. Um, offensive line looked horrific week one, but last week looked very good. Um, but just lost say Amalu for the year. He went on IR, so that's mm-hmm. going to be a tough loss at uh, left guard for them. Where we already have Jason Peters uh, playing left tackle, so that's uh, yeah. going to be a Peters tough is one. Always um, rough because Peters is always rough because you never know when he's going to get banged up. I mean, I love right. the guy, I mean, but he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, no yeah. doubt, but. He's, he's also 37, I think, 36. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. um, did you hear Rieger just got put on the IR, so he's a few weeks out before you come, come I back? I did not. Yeah. I was, was been out the a couple there. hours ago. So. Uh, um, that's a, a is, the, is the seat hot for, for, for Doug Peterson? Do you think it think is? It has to, I think it has to be. I mean, since uh, since he won the, the Super Bowl, Bowl, you you know haven't really they came back there were a lot of injuries last year and I showed some heart and you know but end of the day you, you gotta if you have the pieces in place I think uh, Schultz Jim Schultz uh, Schwartz I'm sorry his his seat's got to be a little hotter than Doug's because mm-hmm. that defense mm-hmm. right now but I think they might be the worst linebacking group in the NFL they don't have anybody right. to make a play I mean right right it's, it's hey, tough um, but I mean Doug Peterson Doug Peterson definitely should have his eyes you know open a little wider trying to make some adjustments I think for sure and out on the corner you guys signed uh Darius Slay going into this season right um what do you think there <laughs> another another man-to-man yeah another man-to-man uh cornerback and you bring him in to play seven yards off the line so I don't mm-hmm. understand yeah but yeah. uh that's one of those things you know started all the way back with Namdi. When they, you know, Nandi was a, the man guy. Yeah. Bring him in and play zone. He's getting burnt. You know, Slay hasn't looked bad. I'm not saying that, but I, he, let him play to his what his strength is, and that's uh, press man to man coverage. So it always has been. Absolutely. So, so uh, circling back to to Carson Wentz, what do you think? I, I was listening to some people this week. Um, you know, the talking heads on ESPN and stuff like that. And there was a little <laughs> bit of there was a little bit. I'm sure you probably saw it. Uh, Max Kellerman. Um, yeah, flapping Keller his gums about Smith questioning his, whether he's listening to the coaching. Where do you stand on that? Do you think it's just the trying to do too much, or do you think he's he's I, regressing, or or what? I think he's he's putting a little bit too much on his shoulders, um, trying to do a little bit too much, trying to force some throws. Um, he's missing some some wide open throws. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a little bit of everything. I think maybe it's one of those things you gotta, you know step back and. And, you know, take a deep breath and, and just focus on making the next play that's in front of you. You know, don't right. worry about 
if it's you know you're third and or second and fifteen, you don't need fifteen. Get six or seven. Check it right. down. Do we got to do, you know, live to play another down per se instead of you know throwing the ball uh, you know to the other team or, or dropping the ball? He's, I think he leads the leads the league. I think in turnovers. I'm pretty positive, or at least close to. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not. That's not a good thing. Yeah, Can't right. score without the football. All right. And then before we move on to the Phillies, what's your take on this weekend? They got the Bengals coming into Philly, right? Yeah, Bengals coming into Philly. But, uh, you know, that's not, Joe Burrow isn't a slouch. He's a good wide receiver. I mean, right now these guys can make plays on the outside. I'm going to play the Eagles. Until they yeah. start showing me otherwise, they can cover these guys. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it's a given. I think they, they should win the game. Uh, you know, the Bengals are a you know young team, mm-hmm. I guess you would say. But, you know, they're up and coming. You know, a couple of years could be a pretty solid team. Yeah, I think so, too. That's where I'm at with them. I think uh, Burrow's on, on a, a good path. Um, they yeah. Circle, they, they, you know, they build that line in front of him. So, so um, yep. I know you said you're That's watching the Phillies. That's a big part. Win down the winter trenches. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, Phillies got a score update. Anything else on the score there? Three one still. Three one. Three one. Phils here in the uh, seventh now. Okay. We just brought our Eflin's still going, so that's good. At least we haven't gotten to the bullpen yet. <laughs> Nine, Ninety-eight pitches. Right on. Eflin's been good the last couple starts, actually. Um, yeah. I always was pretty high on Eflin. He's got good stuff. I think um, he'd be a number three guy, but he just hasn't put it all together. The last couple starts, he looked pretty good though. They needed it. Yep. So before we go directly into the Phillies, let's talk real quick yeah. about the new rules in baseball. You and I are both, you know, at our core, we're baseball guys. Um, True story. What do, you think? what do you think of the, let's say, like the DH and the NL? What's your what's your take there? Uh, I mean, I like the, the game the way it is, but, I mean, if you, you're trying to get – what they're trying to do, and I understand they're appealing to the younger generation that can't sit through a nine-inning game. They're trying to give them some more excitement and some more run scoring. Right. So I understand right. from that point. I mean, what I like to, to you know, watch the game unfold where you got to figure out if you're making a double switch or mm-hmm. stuff like that was always exciting for me. But you I do. think in the where we're going – in today's day and age, I think it's just inevitable if it's not going to stay after this year. I think it's just, just a matter down the road yeah. soon, sooner than I, later, I, I would think. I personally feel like they're going to jam all these rules down our throat in the off season and say, well, you know, it worked for the short season, so, so here you go, including – a man on second base to start extras, which I just yeah, despise that um, I rule. Can't, I can't do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's part of, the, part of the game. you got to get on base to score runs, and you're just putting guys on base. I mean, am I, to be a Hall of Fame level baseball player, you fail seven out of ten times, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they mm-hmm. say. Yep. And now you're going to just give these guys two bags? I, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it at all. I, I heard somebody say the other day that they would accept it if it was like, say, to start the 12th inning. Now you're coming a little bit into the range where I'm like, okay, I guess. I, I guess yeah, I, I mean, with that. but also I can remember 18, 19 inning games where, you know, staying up watching these games, you know, back in the day. And it's, that's exciting. I mean, yeah. Is it the most purest form of baseball when you get to the 18th inning? And probably not. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, when I look back know, at when I look back at the Giants making their third World Series run, they won uh, in Washington in 18 on a Bre- uh, Brandon Belt home run, two to one. So most fans would look at that as two to uh, two to one, 18 innings. That's boring for a guy like me. I'm like, that's yeah, my most no, memorable no. game out of that whole playoff no. season. It was amazing. So yeah, I'm in. I'm watching that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with so, you. um, the I hope the seven inning double headers go away. <laughs> yeah. Those got to go away. Those have to go away. I can't. Um, the biggest one, though, playoff format. Now, they said Manfred is leaning towards bringing the, you know, 16 teams, you know, bring everybody with you, bring the whole league into the playoffs. I don't like that either. Yeah. That's, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'd like to go back the way it was before, have that play in wild card game was always exciting. Yes. And then have that team go play the best team in the league and see what they got, you know? Yep. yep. I think that baseball of all the sports is that war of attrition over the course of 162 games, and you prove that you belong there. We're going to end up yep. with teams right at 500, which happens every once in a while, you know, in the, the old format, but not multiple teams. We're going to have multiple teams right around 500 in the 60 game format. So um, yeah. let's get to the fills. Um, what do you think of Girardi? Are you happy with that hire? Yeah, I love Girardi. Um, 
guy that's going to hold people accountable. Um, I listen, Gabe does things, Gabe did things his own way. Um, you know, and just necessarily didn't work here as with this group. Yeah. I think this team needed to have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a little tougher, tougher leadership at the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not super happy with, obviously, I've, I've said it a couple times now already with, with this bullpen for the last years after years, we haven't had a bullpen to even be able to kind of hold a lead for, for a guy like Nola or, you know, even uh, Arietta the last couple of years. Yeah, he wasn't healthy, but he could pitch a decent six innings and guys would come in and, you know, yeah. he's getting a bad rap because he's, yeah, he's giving up three, four runs. But the offense you have, you, you built this team to hit. It's not a secret. I mean, if you were doing it the other way, then the bullpen wouldn't be what it's like. I think Clintac and um, Andy McPhail are uh, definitely at a turning point. We got to make some moves in, the, in this off season. If they're still around to make this pitching staff better because Bryce didn't sign here for 13 years to, to yeah. go 500. Right. Right. Um, what's your take? You think, uh, I mean, we've got like five days left in the season. Um, yeah, they, you think they can, you think they can pull it off? You think they can squeak in there? I mean, you well, got you're battling the, us and uh, in, in a couple other squads. So, so yeah, Brewers, Giants, Reds, Phillies, I think, are the last four for those two spots. Yes, sir. Um, it, uh, the only good thing we have going is at least the last four games we have starters pitching. We don't have any bullpen games because yeah, there you go. Those those bullpen games are we haven't I mean, we're not going to win one. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Right. right. Um, that last night was their best chance at winning one. You know, and they bring Workman in, who they got from Boston, who's been just terrible. Seems like a nice guy, but <laughs> has not performed at all. Right, uh, right. But he stands there in front of the microphone every, or you know, in the me- the meetings every day, and, and takes the beating. You know, yep. doesn't make doesn't make excuses. So I mean, you know, you got to respect the guy for that. But it's just not getting the job done. Him or Embry, both of them, they came came from Boston, haven't gotten the job done. I mean, when you so, go one through nine through that lineup, though, you guys are stacked. Uh, that lineup is. Just- I mean, yeah, Kutch. Harper, Bo- Alec Bohm's a monster, man. Yeah. I'm so excited to watch this kid. Yes. Uh, you know, GD, I hope they bring GD back. Uh, I know he's 31, mm-hmm. but you don't have an, an answer at shortstop right now. Yeah. Sign him to two more years. Yep. Um, JT, same deal. I'm shocked they haven't signed him to an extension yet. And if they mm-hmm. don't, it could get ugly in here in Philly or out there in Philly. I'm actually not even – I'm in Chicago. But um, <laughs> back home in Philly, it could get pretty ugly if they, yeah. uh, if they don't bring JT back. Yep. You know, you move Sixto Sanchez, who has looked – absolutely dynamite since he's come up and you're going to let real Muto walk after two years. I don't know if you can do that. So, yeah, right. Right. But so, I mean, yeah, the offense, I mean, I, yeah, offense is great. <laughs> yeah, they can, they, and they, I, I'm a big believer. I said it on uh, one of these shows at the very beginning of the season that I think normally I'm a pitching guy when it comes to making a run in the playoffs. And I still do think right. aces and all that do absolutely. equate to aces in the playoffs this season. But I think that lineup gets into the playoffs. That's dangerous because I think scoring is is going to be up in the playoffs this year as compared to other years. And it's just a feeling I have just because of the limited, um, not wanting to put too much wear and tear on arms in this situation yeah. in the short season and stuff like that. So we'll see. How that if goes. you uh, look at, I mean, if the Phils do make the playoffs, first round is a three three game series. Mm-hmm. You're rolling Nola and Wheeler out with that lineup. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, do me a favor. If you guys squeak in, get the eight spot and go into LA and knock the Dodgers out for me, all right? I'll do. I'll do my best. <laughs> all right. So we'll just r- roll through the Sixers and the Flyers real quick. The Sixers. Yeah, yeah. Um, next coach. What do you think? Not Mike D'Antoni. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I was out. hoping. I, I, I can't. I can't watch that kind of basketball, man. That's yeah, not I, I don't like that either. I was hoping it was going to be Donovan, but he's Billy really Donovan. Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. But he's with the ball, right? So, yeah. uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not. I, I wanted Donovan when he became available, but in the same breath, Donovan was going to be uh, a quite a demanded, you know, yeah. a guy. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, the, the Bulls team in Chicago here, they're young. They're not bad. Yeah. I mean, they're not great. They have pieces. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, and if they hit on a um, if they hit on a lottery pick this year and get a, a, a um, you know a stud yeah. to go into that lineup, and some of those guys are, are really good. Um, yep, I agree. If you are sitting, put your general manager hat on. Are you splitting up sure. Embiid and Simmons, or are you going to give it another run or two? I'm going to let him. I'm going to bring another coach in. I'm going to hmm. give him another year. I, if somebody comes knocking for Horford or Harris, um, I'm listening. Sure. 
Sure. Um, they just they just paid Harris a lot of money, though. That's going to be yeah. a tough contract to move. Yeah, I think Horford's uh, the guy that's the the one that just doesn't fit. It was just, no, it, you it, just it, can't play him. They can't be him, Simmons, and Embiid can't be on the court at the same time. Yep. Um, yep. They just and I to be honest with you, I wouldn't be opposed to them sliding Ben to the four. Uh, oh, I mean, I gotcha. know he can handle the ball, but you can ha- you can handle the ball from the four as well. Sure. Uh, you know, you can you can make, but I, I think they need guards that can shoot the ball. They don't have any of them. Josh Richardson was a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, he could come back next year and have a more solid uh, season. Uh, I love Matisse Seibel uh, coming off the bench. His defense shooting could get better, but I mean they need to they need to address shooting and the guard position. I yep. think this yep. offseason for sure. All right, so I'm going to put on my general manager hat for my team, the Utah Jazz, and I'm yeah. going to ring up. I'm going to ring up your phone, and I'm going to okay. say, "Look, man, we're going to swap big men. I'm going to give you Rudy Gobert for Joel Embiid. Are you pulling the trigger on that?" That's tough. Gobert's a defensive monster. Um, yeah. uh, you know, if plays with his back to the basket a majority of the time and in the paint, which is is what we don't have. It mm-hmm. could solve some of the could solve some of the spacing issues that we've had. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you need guys. Then Simmons has to shoot the ball a little bit more, which I'm not sure he's ever going to do. Right. Uh, I mean, I think I'd have to I'd have to stick with my guy. I think, although Gobert is 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 very good. That Utah but, team is really good. You guys yeah, have a good re- future out there too. The reason I came up with that one is I get just a little – I get slightly frustrated with Gobert in that he lacks um, go-to moves and whatnot. He's a put-back and a yeah. lob guy. Um, a mm-hmm. little bit he, – he did – you know, I started I started crying about him in the playoffs, and then he put up like a 20 and 20 game, and I was like, okay, maybe well, that, that works. That always you know, works. A bunch of pick yeah. and rolls, and he was rolling to the basket and making some nice moves on with, with the ball in his hand once he got it. But um, he clogs up the lane a little bit for, for Mitchell, and I'd like to see Mitchell with a little bit of a clear lane. But the problem there is if, uh, if Joel is just going to camp out at the three-point line and, and fire up threes all night, you're not really getting much out of him. Um, no. You know, Although so. I, I will say, listen, it's a great it's a great tool to have as a, as a seven foot two guy sure. that can you can shoot a three pointer. Yeah. Um, and today's NBA, I get it. Anthony Davis the other night in the Lakers game, you know, that kid's a freak. Not yeah. afraid to win the game. Um, I've been watching him since Kentucky, man. I mean, and he's he's been that talented. Yep. Oh, uh oh. Kutch. Yep. Kutch went yard four nice. one fills. Nice. 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 Um, I've always liked Kutch, great player. Um, I was happy when He's he came great to the dude, Giants, man. and then, and then I was like, when the Giants traded him because we were going nowhere. I was like, good. I'm glad he's going to go somewhere else, and I'll get a shot at a ring. So he's a he's a great guy on this in this in this locker room, which is you know missing him last year. I mean, they had a great early start last year. And then once Kutch got hurt, they had nobody mm-hmm. to get on base at the top of the line. So having him back was a nice nice punch in the arm this year for sure. Yep, yep. And uh, the other thing about him is he has probably the most legendary baseball card of the last 20 years, if you saw his card yeah. this year. <laughs> yep. That thing is yeah. just sick. So great. Yeah, so, it is any- awesome. Uncle Larry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So we'll move on to the Flyers, and then I'm going to let you go, my friend. So uh, sure. where's the? what's the direction? Are you happy with where the Flyers are headed? I am, man. Um, Vigneault did a great job this year. Um, I mean, do I think they – they're at least as good as the Islanders, and they look pretty bad in that series. Um, but Carter Hart's the real deal. First yeah. goaltender we've had since probably he- Hextall. Yeah. I mean, right. that you know you're going to count on for, for years in coming. Um, a lot of young guys, Konechny, uh, you know, uh, Provorov. Uh, the defensive line, the two top two defensive pairings were awesome this year. Yep. Uh, a couple young guys, too. Um, and Giroux, I mean, everybody wanted to complain about Giroux not scoring in the playoffs. Well, Giroux's going into his 15th year. Yeah. You know, some of, these, some of these younger guys, he, he's, he's the, you know, the grown up there. He's, he's the guy that's going to, you know, keep the locker room going. And, yep. and maybe some of the younger guys could have stepped up a little bit. I mean, I think out of any team in Philly right now, they're on the best track, I guess you would say, to, 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 to be relevant. As one far as the cool things that, one of the cool things that uh, happened that I think really speaks about where the team is is they might have been the hottest team in the NHL when the shutdown came around. Yeah. And then the shutdown after a couple months, they came out and they put their nose to the grindstone and they won some big games in those little those pre-playoff games. <laughs> yeah, the, the round robin. robin they, yeah, <laughs> they went undefeated. They went three zero. Yep. So, so that says a lot about how they came in committed and played really good hockey. So. 
Carter, Carter Hart's already working out now. He's, he wants to get started again. Oh. <laughs> so I read an article the other day. He's been, <laughs> right he, he, took, he took a week off and then went right back at it. So that's good. Stuff. I guess that's what it's like to be 21, though. That is good stuff. So, Murph, I really appreciate you stopping in here on Sports Rambling. Oh, man, I am trying to get this thing right. up off the ground, um, see what yeah. we can do. If you have any interest in coming back in, you are always welcome. If you want to talk about the Eagles as awesome, the season man. goes along and – and whatever else comes We can up. talk about whatever you want, man. I'll talk sports all day long. You know that. <laughs> right on, brother. I'm always looking for – you know, one of the funny things is is it took a long time for me. Dar had kicked me in the butt a couple times. Like, come on, do it. You know you want to do that again. You want, you want yeah. to get back out there and do that. And I'm always like, it's hard to carry a one-man show. So, you may be hearing from me yeah. so we can do a little bit more corresponding together and talk about what's going on in big Sounds games. Sounds good, my man. Right. Hey, I hope everything's going well. And, uh, you know, give Darcy my love. I'll talk to you guys soon, all right? I appreciate it, brother. I will talk to you soon. You can look through yeah. this to be out on probably Friday morning or so. And if you can give it a – I know you've got an extensive unit of, yeah, of uh, course. family and friends. So if you can push this thing out there, I would really appreciate it, brother. Much love. Of, of course. Yeah, no problem. I'll talk to you soon, bro. Take care. All right, Murph. Take care, bro. Yeah.